so I have so been actually been working with you since I was a youth. Um, I'm 36 years old, almost 37, and I've been doing this since youth work since I was about 19. So um, I am very uh, predispositioned to working with youth, I will say that much. Um, so the big program that we have here that um, I actually came to talk about today is called the Service Access for Youth, Youth Engaged in Service. Um, this is a collaborative project. It is not just a GLCC's project. It's something that's worked on very actively by the GLCC, PERSAD Center, uh, Homeless Children's Education Fund, Action Housing, UPMC Adolescent Health and Medicine, Healthcare for the Homeless, uh, Downtown Outreach Center. Um, I'm forgetting a few, they're all here. <laughs> you know, we have individual folks that come and help just out of the kindness of their hearts. We have a connection with Kiwanis that provides us volunteers every week. Um, so let me tell you a little bit more about it. Um, <clears throat> service Access for Youth, Youth Engaged in Service, or Say Yes, uh, actually started because um, a local program called The Hub uh, had lost its funding. And The Hub provided services that included a shower, a place to sleep, and things like that for youth in crisis downtown. Now, it was not generally queer specific, um, but when we found out about that, we decided that something needed to be done because these kids are still homeless, they're still in crisis, they still need somewhere to go. Um, we do not provide showers. Uh, they, they can't sleep here. However, we do have connections to resources through the networking that we're doing um, to get them a shower, to get them a locker, to get them clothing, um, food kits, hygiene kits, basic stuff that they need. Um, it started out as a one-day project. Uh, it started out on Wednesday. And uh, Wednesday is still our big day. We actually have a medical clinic which is directly funded by UPMC Adolescent and um, Healthcare for the Homeless, where we can provide basic medical care and services for anybody uninsured or underinsured, 25 and under. Um, we also have a mental health therapist who is here from Downtown Outreach Center who can see anybody of any age. Uh, which is fantastic because uh, we do end up with some uh, fence straddlers, people that are 26, 27 years old or, you know, who we've been, we've been working with for several months and just turned 26. So it's good that we have access to that. Um, in addition, we also have volunteers that help with literacy, um, job applications, housing applications, um, anything that they need to get to their next best step. Um, uh, what had happened is the kids found out that this was a cool space, the young adults, because they're not all teenagers, uh, and they just started coming all the time, which, you know, was great, except what do we do with them? So we all met as a collaborative and, and discussed this issue and decided that if they were going to be here, we're going to have programming. Um, so now the program is not just Wednesday, although Wednesday is the big day. It's Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, 4 to 7, and Wednesday, 12 to 3. And during those times, we have um, HCEF volunteers, that's um, Homeless Children's Education Fund, um, who come in to guide them through activities, help them with resumes, hang out with them chill um, because one of the things that's really hard is when you're working with young adults uh, you know people tend to think that young people are fancy free and trusting and open and the thing is is that when and this is for anybody but especially with young adults when they go through crisis trust is the first thing to go um, and if you just come in to somebody and is and are saying things like I, I want to help you let's do this let's they're gonna look at you like you're nuts you know you have to be able to Take the time, take a breath, have a conversation. Find out where they're coming from and don't be like, well, I think this is the best thing for you to do because what they're going to go is just like this. And then you've not, you've not helped, you've actually hindered. And the likelihood that they'll ask any other adult for help has just been lessened. Um, so we do take a, we take a proactive um, harm reduction approach. So, you know, we try to be enthusiastic about the things that the youth want to do. Uh, we talk to them about what their goals are um, <clears throat> and then slowly try to get them there. Uh, we, and, and with that, we have to be both forgiving of ourselves and the young folks that we work with because they are going through things every day that we are not privy to. You know, they're only here for a couple hours a day and then they have to go back to their, their, real, their real life, which is, could quite literally be living under a bridge. 
um, or living in a shelter or living in a home or couch surfing with a friend who might lose their apartment in a week. Um, what's, uh, this was new to me when I started two and a half years ago. My, my um, background is actually in HIV AIDS prevention and intervention. Uh, I learned very quickly uh, how fast crises happen with housing. Um, my first client uh, was a young 18, almost, 18 year old uh, who had been beaten up at home because he, his brothers found out he was gay. Um, and he didn't have anywhere to go and he was out in the middle of a very not networked community. There wasn't, wasn't buses that ran very well or anything. And um, the only thing I could do was stay on the phone with him all night. Uh, so I did. Uh, so we could get him somewhere. He sat at a bus stop and waited until the bus could come and then went to somewhere he could he had support. Um, I and mean, it was just that quick. I had talked to the kid two days before and everything was fine. Um, and so you have to, in order to do this kind of stuff, you kind of have to be willing to um, be creative and also uh, keep appropriate boundaries. Um, because oftentimes young folks that are going through these kind of crises haven't had um, <clears throat> let's say appropriate adult supervision, or if they had, they've been very disappointed. And especially with our GLBT clientele, um, the most common reason for them to be homeless is because they've been rejected, because somebody outed them or they outed themselves, and then their family said, no, you have to go. And that's a very nice way of putting it. Um, some of the stories these kids tell will break your heart. Um, they're good kids, they're smart kids, they want to go to school, they want to they finish, they want to make something of themselves, but then they have the rug pulled out from underneath them. Um, and this doesn't happen just to teenagers, you know, and it also doesn't happen just to those under 21. Uh, you know, I have met, I have met folks that, uh, you know, were well into their 20s that, you know, have kept their their, um, either their gender identity or sexual orientation kind of under wraps and somebody blew it up. You know, some status on Facebook, because young adults don't think, uh, through all the way, when sometimes when they post things, um, or what have you, and then so all of a sudden they're homeless, you know, with no support, or they are in school and their parents pulled the money, um, you know, that kind of stuff. So I really feel that this program has made a very positive impact. I, I know that... If I'm speaking from personal experience, it's definitely opened my eyes uh, to the various kinds of needs that is out there, um, and not only not only young adults, but adults as well. Um, because as people have found out about the program, we're getting a lot of additional calls from folks that are are older than 25. Uh, so to respond to that, what we're hoping to do is create a, a personal care closet. Uh, which will <clears throat> be donations that we bring in that will be split between youth and adults so that when they come in, I have something to give them. Um, right now, like for, you know, like for instance, the clinic, you know, uh, while she can give resources to absolutely anybody, their services in specific, she can't. Um, so she could refer you to, you know, um, the department, um, the health, the health and Wellness Center in your area, she could refer you to Allegheny County Health Department or anything like that, but she might not be able to do the testing because it wouldn't be, wouldn't be covered. Um, but we're hoping that since there has been such a, an outpour of need that, that, will, that we'll be able to work on changing that. And the first step, of course, is creating that care closet. Um, but right now, uh, I don't know if you saw when you came in, but the hallway is full of stuff. Uh, that was a donation given by a community member who decided to take a personal collection from all of her friends. Um, that is soap and socks and blankets and coats and hats, 50 bags, which will be sorted on Tuesday and then handed out on Wednesday. <laughs> Um, you know, it's great. It's a little overwhelming when it comes all at once like that. Um, but it's good that we have that kind of care and compassion in the community.